Hi, I'm Ivy Wanneson. I'm the Director of the Office of Interprofessional Education at the University of Toronto. And I have the distinct pleasure to try to make sure that 1,400 students every year at the University of Toronto graduate competent in interprofessional collaboration. If you look at the way health education has come about, it's been very siloed. If you look at the way our systems have been created in terms of you've got primary care and you've got acute care. They're funded in two separate areas. You've got health education and you've got the hospital practice settings. They're funded separately in silos. You look at how doctors, nurses, physicians, doctors, nurses, uh, pharmacists, how they're trained, siloed. Okay, well, that doesn't make sense. So we need to get back to really thinking about what is it that we really want to do? And what are the structures that are impeding us from getting to that? The Romano report was looking at healthcare reform, and then one piece of that was saying, well, if health professionals are expected to work together, then they really should be expected to learn together. So we now need to go back to the educational field, and so that's where the interprofessional education for collaborative patient-centered practice initiative came into place. From there, big system-wide review, environmental scan of the evidence for advancing interprofessional education, and interprofessional collaborative patient-centered practice. And what I loved about this initiative was that it looked at the evidence, it created a systems approach. Let's get policymakers in here. Let's get students, let's get patient voices, let's get all the people that are embedded with healthcare. Let's make sure we've got bright minds that can think of this using different lenses. 13 hospitals we have, 13 major hospitals in Toronto. Well, let's give them all a leadership training course. Let's get each of those 13 hospitals, get a team. So get a team of a physician, a nurse, get somebody from organizational development, get someone from a manager and a director position as well as from the, from the highest level, your vice president. Bring them together and across the 13 hospitals, bring them together, let's train you about what is IPC. I think this is one of the, the most powerful government collaborative projects or initiatives that we've had here in the country. And I've talked to many more senior mentors that I've had that have never seen something move as quickly and as fast as this initiative. We have now 11 IPE leaders across Toronto that the hospitals have hired because they actually have a common vision as to why this is needed. We have over a thousand people that have, been, that have actually engaged in a leadership training course. We have placements that have actually, their hospitals are the ones developing the trace placements. By March of next year, every single one of our 13 hospitals have piloted an IPE placement. I have been in engaged in trying to advance teamwork at the level of education, at the level of the system, at the level of my own family practice unit. And so at every different level, micro, meso, macro, um, it's about change. And you meet resistance. So what's that resistance about? Is that my resistance because I don't want to change my view and my path that we all need to do this? Or do we have to reflect upon what's going on around and why are those people resisting my point of view? It's not my point of view. We have to actually step back and say, well, what's our point of view? And we have to think about, so the dissonant voice that's there, we have a message that we all need to think about. And until we understand that message, from the dissonant voice, the resistors of change, and incorporate their thoughts to create a new vision, to create a new path, we're not going to advance. In advancing teamwork, you need to recognize that it's not just one initiative. This is part of a whole process. So your initiative needs to actually be linked to something else for it to be sustainable. One of the challenges we have in the system is that, you know, you just do isolated initiatives. Anybody embarking on an initiative on teamwork needs to think about the issue of how that initiative links to something else, which links to something else to create the sustainability of it. The systems approach that we're taking is allowing people to change at different times, and each change is actually another domino effect to the next. These hospitals are now meeting together every six weeks 
leaders come together voluntarily in the evening for a community of practice and they help each other in advancing the knowledge of how to do this. If what we're concentrating today is about teamwork, let's learn the lessons from that, celebrate the successes of what we've learned and apply it to the next bit. So patient safety is on the rise right now, right? That's the next topic of the day. It doesn't mean that teamwork is going to go away tomorrow. Everything that we're learning about teamwork will enable that agenda to come forward. But it's not about patient safety in itself. It's about better quality care. Everything fits to that bigger vision. So there's a number of us that will be working with teamwork. There are other people that are going to be looking at patient safety. We're all working on the same big team to improve healthcare.